Hey guys, this is Kaizen here, and today I'm going to show you five very easy Minecraft redstone clocks. So this is the first redstone clock, and it's also by far the most simple to build. When it is turned on, you'll see here it produces an alternating redstone signal, so it turns on, then off, and then on, and then off, and will continue to do so. So, how do we build this? Well, you want a couple of hoppers, so you place one down, place another hopper going into that hopper, delete the first hopper, and then place the second hopper facing into that one. So the hoppers are now facing each other. We're then going to have a lever to the side here to turn it on and off, and we're going to have our output, which will go from a comparator and output like this. Now, all we need to do is go in here and chuck in an item, and you can see here, as it's turned on, there it goes, producing that alternating signal. We can, of course, turn it off by switching the lever. Now, something to note about this clock. If we were to get rid of this and we try to run the redstone further out, you'll see here that it will not work. So if you want to go further out, and we can still come quite far, we can come as far as we like, but all we need is some repeaters. So the first repeater would go in here like this, and there you go, the clock can work over longer distances. So our next redstone clock is also very simple to make, and it gives us a bit more flexibility. You'll see here when I turn this on, we get the alternating redstone output like this, but by right-clicking on these repeaters, we can slow this down, and of course we can right-click on both of them to set them both onto full to add a fuller delay, and then it lasts for longer. Now we can also add repeaters into the system to lengthen that even further, which I'll come on to in just a second when we build this thing. So, we're going to start with a block there, and we need to power that block like this. Redstone torch on the side, and then a repeater going in this direction, a repeater going in this direction, and some redstone dust in between them. And then, of course, you take your output, and you can take it from any of these points. Uh, but what we're going to do for the sake of this tutorial is just take it from here, and there goes our lamp like that. Now, as I said, you can actually add repeaters into the service, the service, the system, <laughs> if you want. So, for example, what we could do is run a few more repeaters off like this, and then make our output there, coming back like this. And you'll see here, that delay is already lengthened. If I put all of these on full, then we'll get a very exaggerated effect of how we can use this to kind of toggle exactly how we want the pulse to go. So that there is staying on now for a much longer time than it was before. There we go, it's on, and it takes quite a while before it goes back off. And you can, of course, keep this going with as many repeaters as you need to get the exact time that you want. Next up, we have the comparator redstone clock. And if I turn this on, you can see here, this is really quite fast. In fact, it is the fastest clock you can have because it is a one tick clock. And you can see there it's going very quickly around. Now, a couple things to note about this. Uh, basically, if you were to place a repeater down here, you'll see it's just permanently powered on. What you actually need to do is come out a little bit further from the clock and get your output like that. Now, another thing to note is that if we do that over here and we place our repeater down there, it's still permanently powered on. So you need to come out from this side in order to use it in that way. So how do we make this? Well, we're going to start with this little service here, uh, system here, I should say. So we're going to put a lever on top of there to power the block, a comparator going like this, and some redstone dust going around like that. Now, we also need to put the comparator into subtraction mode, and then when we turn it on, there goes our clock. <laughs> Very quick, and quite useful for things like dispensers, if you're dispensing lots of, say, bone meal or arrows or something like that. Next up, we have the Etho Hopper Clock, and this one is fantastic because you can really customize this to produce the exact sort of timing that you need for your system. So let's get into how you build it, and then I'll show you some things that we can do with it. Basically, what we're going to want is to start off with a couple of pistons. So again, we're going to place them like this so that they face into each other, like that. Then coming out of these pistons, we need a comparator on either side, and those comparators run into a block like this, with a redstone dust in front of each of those blocks. We now need two sticky pistons, one to go on here, one to go on there, oops, uh, like that, <laughs> and then a redstone block like this. And then we can either run the red put output like this, or we could run it from this side here if we wanted to, and in this case we're just turning on and off a lamp. So then what we need to do is get a few items and place them inside here. Now the more items that you have inside the hoppers, the longer the delay between the pulse like that. And of course when the redstone uh, comes over in contact with the redstone dust, you get your output, and then when it goes it turns off again. So there's a lot you can do in terms of the timing of that to get it just right for whatever you're building. One side note with the Etho Hopper Clock is that you can turn it on and off if you want to to leave it in a constant state. So what I mean by that is if we place a lever behind here and we power this, then the hopper gets powered and no items go through it, which means that the block will stay over here. And then if we unpower it, the item starts to travel again and the block goes on its way. Now, you can do this when the block's in any position. So if the block's here on the right-hand side, we can power it, it ends up back on the left. If we power it when it's over on the left, 
you can see here, it will just stay on the left. So it will always go back to that position. And of course, you can do the same with this side if you want to, if you wanted to leave it on at certain times and then turn it off to go back to switching to the clock mode. So the final redstone clock is also pretty simple to build, uh, but it does need a little bit of an explanation. You'll see here that it's currently set to two ticks. And of course, we can set it to three or four if we want to extend the delay. However, what we can't do is have it on just one tick because if it does this, it will eventually burn itself out and start working, at which point you'll need to re-update it. So what you need to do is set it to two or more ticks, get rid of the torch, for example, place it back, and then you can see there, it will work just like that. So let's get into how we built this one. Basically, what we wanna do is place a block here, and then a block on top of either side like that, getting rid of these little Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> then what we need is a redstone torch on the side that we want our output to be going. So in that case, we're gonna put that here, and our output's gonna be a, uh, a lamp, I should say. We need a redstone dust under here like this, and we also need a repeater going in this direction like this, and quickly set that to two or more ticks. And there you have it. That is the circuit complete, and that is the final redstone clock complete. A quick thing to add on about this circuit I didn't mention, but you can actually turn it off. All you need to do is have a lever there that you power, and that will turn it all off, and then you can power it again, or flick it again, I should say, and it will set the clock going again. So there you have it, guys. That's five very easy Minecraft redstone clocks. If you like this episode, please do leave a like, and if you really liked it, then be sure to subscribe for more. But for now, guys, that's all I have time for. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.